Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to VSC Season 3. Today's webinar will be a webinar focused on environmental engineering. If you guys are new to our program, Virtual Student Experiences is a pro bono initiative spearheaded for students by students. And we at Virtual Student Experiences want to be the inspiration for aspiration. Our goal is to give students around the world an opportunity to hear from professionals in their career industry of interest in a friendly and casual setting. And if you're a student that knows what you want to do in the future, we at VSC encourage, allow, and connect you with professionals. Through VSC, students are given the chance to decide if their career choice fits their personality skills and overall interests. The VSC, you'll be able to hear from a wide variety of guests from a wide variety of seniority levels. To find out more information and to sign up to be notified about other webinars, you guys can visit our website at www.virtualstudentexperiences.com. And without further ado, our very special guest today is Mr. Pedro de Silva. Mr. Silva started his education at UC Santa Barbara where he attained his BS in chemical engineering. After college, he became a process safety and risk management analyst for IO Mosaic Corporation. From there, he was hired as a corrosion engineer for Corporal Companies Incorporated. And now he's working on getting his master's in sustainable water engineering and is employed as an environmental engineer for ACOM. We are very happy to have you today. Mr. De Silva, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, happy to be here. Um, so just to start us off, can you tell us from your perspective, what exactly is environmental engineering and how did you get into that field? So I kind of fell into this field um, somewhat randomly. I knew I kind of wanted to go into the more um, environmental slash renewables, um, that kind of that kind of technology, that kind of field when I was uh, going through my degree in college. Um, generally, chemical engineering, they kind of prepare you, the, the curriculum is kind of more geared towards um, working in like the oil and gas or the chemical industry, but I knew that wasn't really something I wanted to do. Um, I started off kind of like looking into uh, nuclear energy actually, and I wanted to kind of go into that. I, I did an internship at uh, a, a national lab at uh, in Idaho that mainly focused on nuclear energy. But interestingly enough, my research that I did there was kind of more focused in water and how I and that's kind of how I kind of got more interested in water and water resources and just water technology in general and just kind of going through college I just kind of uh, just kind of figured that like all right nuclear is cool but the job prospects don't look too great water obviously it's a uh, it's probably one of our most valuable resources out there um there's really like there's no really gonna not gonna be any shortage of uh, people working with water in the future. So I and eventually I've decided I want kind of want to go into into that and kind of jumped around different jobs, just hoping to land something more along the lines, and eventually finally ended up in um, this environmental career that's kind of more focused on um, like drinking water remediation, protecting drinking water resources, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then I guess when you were trying to break into that industry, when you were trying to get your first few jobs and internships, were there any special requirements that you had to meet? Um, not necessarily, no. I mean, job the job market uh, recently just always has kind of been like, they, they always want some kind of experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, even if it's uh, like a paid internship, an unpaid internship, they want to see that you are interested in the subject and you're kind of, you're chasing after it, uh, right? So with my first job, I mean, my first internship, I kind of just applied on a whim and got lucky and kind of just got it. Um, that just kind of introduced me to the field. And since then I kind of just started pursuing that kind of field and pursuing uh, stuff in the sort of like water industry. And then the experience eventually just kind of builds up to the point where um, they recognize that you're passionate about it and you know what you're doing really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. And then I guess in terms of education and schooling, um, can you speak to the role that education plays in your success and really how important is it to go to a named school or get really good grades in college? Um, I, I would say maybe it's like 50-50 or it depends what your preference really, right? I wouldn't worry too much about the name of the school. Um, if you get into a really good school, obviously you're going to be surrounded by a bunch of really smart people, right? Um, if you get into a school that's maybe not so good, then you might not be as surrounded by as many smart people, did, but you also have the opportunity to excel more. Kind of like the way I was kind of explained to me is just like, you wanna be a small fish in a 
big pond or do you want to be a big fish in a small pond? And it kind of just depends on the person, right? Mm -hmm. Some people excel if they're the small fish and they're kind of surrounded by other people that they can uh, like feed off of and grow and grow with versus other people are kind of, they excel more when they're the bigger fish in the pond and they can kind of stand out among the crowd. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And I guess in terms of the lessons that you took away from your time in college, can you speak to you maybe some some of the most important ones that helped you the most in your career so far? The lessons, um, I don't know. <laughs> there's just, there's a lot. <laughs> uh, college is really, it's a really transformative experience. Mm -hmm. um, you go through a lot of different experiences. You go through a lot of, you meet a lot of different people. Um, I, I can't really think of just one most important lesson out of my experience there because like, I'm just a completely different person coming out of it than I was going in. Um, I guess my advice, like I said, just be be open to advice from anyone. You always you always have the opportunity to learn from anyone, um, no matter who it is. So, yeah. awesome. Um, I guess, can you speak to maybe some of the things that you did in college that helped you prepare you for the industry? Um, so making connections is pretty big. Um, you never know when you're going to find someone who has a connection somewhere that's going to be uh, helpful towards your career. Mm -hmm. um, you just generally being like, yeah, being open to making friends with different people. Um, as I was saying before, like you, you have, you have, you can learn some, something from everybody. Um, so join different clubs, join different groups. I, I would say, like I said, just put yourself out there, put yourself out to learning as much as you can really. Mm -hmm. I mean, networking is of course a very important skill, as you mentioned, um, but for students that are really trying to build their network and um, gain that experience in networking. Do you have any tips for them as to how they should start to grow their network? Uh, yeah, so LinkedIn is has been pretty huge um, for me at least. Um, I, I grew up um, uh, in, in San Diego. My parents are both immigrants. I didn't have a big ne network from them. I kind of had to build it on my own too. Um, nowadays, the internet makes it really easy. So it's easy to kind of uh, find someone online. Uh, I think the best advice that I could give if you're if you're looking to build your network of uh, prof like professional networks, find someone online that has the job that you want in the future and try and see if you can connect with them, like see if they can schedule a call or schedule like a short meeting or something and just ask them questions. People love talking about what they do for work. I mean, there's a reason they're, they're in that field. There's a reason I'm here that I'm talking to you guys. So ask them questions, then and just uh, just eventually just get to know them, get to know what it's like, uh, like what their life is like and how they like working in a, that industry. And you'll eventually just build up those connections, uh, those professional connections in that, in that sort of manner. Yeah, that's um, really great advice. Thank you so much for that. And then I guess focusing in on your, your experience with working um, at companies, can you touch on your experience at uh, corpo companies and maybe what your responsibilities was there what your day-to-day -day looked like yeah so that was my previous job um i'm uh i've been kind of <laughs> jumping around a little bit just kind of shopping around where exactly i want in a career so um with corpo that was my technically second job out of college i worked first at uh, io mosaic and that was more of like a consulting job where i would kind of just run out my day-to-day my -day was mainly just kind of like running calculations, writing technical reports, and helping my supervisor with um, more like high-level tasks for our clients. Um, I eventually moved to Corporal because I wanted to kind of see the other side of just the engineering industry, which is more just kind of getting your hands dirty, like being out in the field, like installing this technology, like making sure it works. <laughs> That's kind of what I did at Corpro. Um, to get a little bit more specific, uh, Corpro kind of specializes in corrosion engineering. So basically like 80% of our work was installing or in inspecting uh, assets that people want to 
prevent from like corroding and bursting and leaking and stuff like that. So we did a lot of storage tanks that store water or fuel, uh, pipelines, um, stuff like that. So kind of just helping them prevent that stuff from um, leaking into the out into the environment. Um, our, my job was to my job was mainly um, I guess uh, it I guess it would kind of be described as like a field engineer. So I would do a lot of inspections. I would uh, sometimes be out in the field helping the construction team actually install the the technology too. Uh, other times I was in the office doing more project management stuff like ordering materials or. Um, talking to clients about um, schedule, like scheduling when to come out or when to do these installations and stuff like that. Um, so it gave me, it gave me a kind of a good um, experience working with like municipal projects, like big construction projects. Um, so after kind of getting that kind of experience, I had both the experience with the consulting work at IO Mosaic, where I did a lot of like computery stuff, working like running calculations and stuff like that. And then I also had the experience from Corpro where I got a lot of field experience. I kind of learned how things work out in the real world. And it was a really good kind of segue into my current position, which is a little bit of both. I do a little bit of uh, field work. I do a little bit of um, office work and having both those jobs in my background and my experience kind of helps me see which one do I like better, which one do I like, um, which one kind of do I want to uh, gear towards. And I kind of just decided like, oh, I like a little bit of both. And this is kind of the, the job that I'm currently at is kind of a, a good happy medium for that. Well, certainly and that it's a good segue into my next question, which was, um, can you tell me about your job at ACOM and what that's like, especially in the time of the pandemic, like what types of skills do you use and how does the job that you have now, um, did you have it before the pandemic? Uh, no, I actually moved into it in last July. So I'm coming up towards a year, it's pretty soon. So I guess, how has that job been during the pandemic? Um, it's been interesting. So um, obviously Acom is a really big company. Um, our office is based out of Orange County and it's one of the bigger offices in California, but I haven't met too many people just because of the pandemic. We've only had Zoom calls and um, stuff like that. I didn't even meet my boss face to face until like a couple months ago, really. So it's been a little bit of a transition, especially for my last job where I was in the office every single day, even out in the field working, like getting my hands dirty with some of the construction workers sometimes. So it was a little bit of a switch, but um, I don't know. It's 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 been pretty smooth. Um, there's been some stuff that I think could have gone better, but for the most part, um, that come uh, Acom's been pretty good with pretty flexible with uh, work from home and just transitioning to uh, just dealing with the pandemic in general. So I've been pretty happy with that. I don't have too much to complain about. Um, like I said, I still have to do some field work every once in a while. Um, and when I do, it's, it's, it's not a problem. We, they, they have um, their uh, like COVID guidelines that we follow. But yeah, it's, it's been pretty smooth. Um, I mean, did you want to hear like kind of more what I do or more along the lines of um, just kind of how, how, how it's like to like start a new job during a pandemic? Um, I guess I'd be curious as to know like what you do, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess, I'll, like I said, most of my job would be kind of project management. Um, so I'm I'm on two 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 projects right now. Um, one's kind of slowed down a little bit because we're waiting on approval from the EPA to um, just add add some new new wells. Basically, that one is. Um, there's some contaminated drinking water out in Eastern LA that we're trying to design a remediation system to kind of get it, like clean it up. It's in the um, investigation stage right now. So I'm working with a team of geologists to um, install a bunch of new monitoring wells and um, plan out our remediation strategy. So right now uh, we're, we're just in the stage where um, 
we're drilling the new wells, um, it takes it takes it takes a, a lot of time because you have to get approval from a lot of different regulatory um, institutions like the the city, the county, obviously the EPA, the government, all all this kind of stuff. So it's a slow process, but we're getting through it. But so that one's kind of been slow right now. And then another one I'm working with. Um, Shell, the oil company, and they they inherited a facility that had some um, polluted groundwater um, under it. So since they um, now own the facility, they're responsible for cleaning that up. So they hire us to operate, design, and run their remediation system that they have on site, which basically is a series of a bunch of wells scattered around their facility that um, extracts and pulls out the water from underground. We have a bunch of units that are um, above ground that treat the water through a bunch of different kinds of methods. And then once the water is treated, then we discharge it out to the back to the sewer. So my job on that one is the one that I'm primarily working on right now. Um, I have two or three different systems that I'm responsible for. I work with a team of two, two other engineers and um, the, um, the, tech, the technician crew. Uh, so each of each of us, the, the technicians are kind of more general, but each of the engineers are kind of responsible for their own systems. So uh, I'm mostly responsible for in like an oil water separator. Um, so obviously once we get the water out of the ground, sometimes it's con contaminated with oil or some other stuff. So the oil water separ separator kind of helps um, separate out the, the oil before we send it off to some of our other systems that can't handle um, uh, water too saturated with oil. So it's a really old system and um, I kind of got the, the short the, <laughs> the short straw by getting that one. But basically right now I'm just help, uh, I, I'm working with uh, some other like senior engineers and some subject matter experts that have worked with uh, oil water separators in the past um, to just kind of improve how the system works. Um, I help um, just the technicians uh, run maintenance activities. So like if the pipe corrodes or something, or if there's a um, like a pressure gauge or something that's broken, then I work with them to order new parts, um, make sure that they, they know what they're doing when they're going to fix it, um, what needs fixing and helping them kind of prioritize their day to day. Um, I also kind of work on that more higher level too, just like, all right, what can we improve to make sure that um, the system is operating at the at its like, peak efficiency. So, um, like uh, what kind of safety safety aspects um, are we looking at? It's like are all the alarms working? Are um, all the um, like gas sensors and uh, like instrumentation on the system? Is that all? Is that working? Are all the wells extracting as much water as we're supposed to be doing? Like doing. Um, just like I said, it's, it's a lot of like, it's a lot of operations, a lot of trying to just make sure uh, everything's working fine. Uh, a lot of uh, putting out fires, not literally, but figuratively. So um, that's, that's been my day to day for the, at least for the past few months. Awesome. And I guess um, for students that are interested in becoming environmental engineers, such as yourself, um, do you have any suggestions or general words of wisdom for them? Um, yeah, uh, so it's a very big field. Obviously, you can you can really specialize in a lot of different kinds of environmental aspects. So I said I was interested in water. So water is kind of like where I'm kind of moving into um, my background in chemical engineering just really helps with dealing with any kind of like water quality, water quality, um, like contaminated water, fluid flow, all that kind of stuff. And it really gives me a good background to deal with those kinds of problems that deal with those kinds of issues. But I also have coworkers um, that are were mechanical engineers and uh, geologists, or um, I think, yeah, I have one that is even an environmental scientist too. Um, they all, they all have their, their different backgrounds and they all have their little niches in our projects. Um, so it's, it's a really big field. You can get into it. If you're passionate about it, you can really get into it with um, whatever kind of technical uh, background that you might have. 
uh, I would say, like I said, if you want to get into my certain type, like uh, specifically like water, like my specific kind of field in the environmental industry, um, like I said, I, chemical engineering is great. It uh, gives you a, a big solid foundation of dealing with like fluids, chemicals, all that kind of stuff that is a really good um, uh, foundation for dealing with water. Whereas, um, that's it. If you want to work in like um, uh, like groundwater or like environment, like environmental side assessment, like being a geologist is great because you know you have a stronger uh, grasp on um, like mapping and geography and uh, uh, figuring out how like a, a certain spill or release might infect like a general uh, environment or something like that. Something that where I'm not as strong at. Um, whereas like, like I said, we deal with a lot of, um, like, like heavy equipment too, like, um, piping and, um, like I said, uh, just big like tanks and stuff like that. And, uh, having like a mechanical engineering background and like knowing how to like, knowing how to work pumps and, um, like separators and all that kind of stuff, uh, is generally really helpful. Um, so I would say if you're, if you're getting in, if you want to get in the environmental, industry, um, any kind of technical degree um, would help. Um, but like I said, it's a big field. Um, kind of, I would say maybe just kind of try and narrow down exactly what you, um, exactly what you kind of like want to shoot for, um, but then start big and then work your way down, work your way towards it. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And then um, final question before we go into the student Q&A. Um, do you have any suggestions as to clubs or courses that students should take at the high school or college level? And really what is the typical path that a successful environmental engineer such as yourself takes? Yeah, so um, one thing uh, that I kind of regret like not doing is like doing more like a, a science fairs and hands-on projects in high school. I, I was never really exposed to that. And um, it wasn't really until college and even like my first job that, or when I started working at a corporate that I really kind of learned how to like work with uh, like real life things really. Um, in college, they teach you a lot of theoretical skills, at least in my field, they teach you a lot of theoretical skills. In high school, you're learning stuff like physics and chemistry, which are also very theoretical and they're very good to know. And they kind of teach you the fundamentals of how things work but you really don't know how things work until you see it like yourself and you're, you, you make something out with your hands. Um, so any kind of uh, clubs or uh, like, um, I know I, might, my, I think my high school had like maybe like a, like a rocketry club, like even if it's not necessarily um, something that you necessarily want to go towards like even like like a rocketry club if they do if they build things if they build their own rockets or something like that like with their hands i would recommend joining just because it, it gives you those kinds of skills and like working with stuff in real life and you'll see that it's very different from what you're learning in classes but what you're learning in classes is uh gives you the fun like the fundamental knowledge of like uh and teaches you how that kind of those sort of, sorts of things work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for all those really great answers. Um, at this time, I think we're going to move into the student Q&A. And we have a student here that is planning to apply to ACOM in Honolulu under environmental planning. And um, do you know who should, they should address their cover letter to? Um, and do you have any general tips for them to get that job? Um, unfortunately, no. Like I said, I've, I've barely kind of uh, started working my way through um, my own office. <laughs> so I'm still kind of like learning some people's names. I, I know um, the ACOM office in um, Honolulu does a lot of uh, federal work. So they work a lot with uh, their, their environmental office works a lot with, I think, the like the Navy and a lot of the um, Pacific military. Um, bases around there. So I don't know, maybe if you, if that's something you're interested in, if you have any family members or know somebody that works uh, at the base, at work, works at the bases and might know the contractors that you can get in contact with um, or stuff like that. I don't know any specifics, but that's, that's how I would go about it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then uh, what's your favorite part of being an environmental engineer? 
<laughs> so I, I would say like I I really enjoy this this field and this job in general just because I really feel like I'm making an impact right so uh, at least like like I was saying the project in um, LA that I was telling you guys about um, that the, that that drinking water um, provides drinking water to like half a million people in LA um, so we're part of the team that's going to help cleaning, help clean it up. Right. So we're basically kind of making sure that half a million people have safe drinking water in the next 10 years. So I really enjoy it just because, all right, like I'm, 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 I'm part of the solution, right. <laughs> uh, I'm doing something that's uh, net good for the world. And that's, that's, that's really what I enjoy. And that's for a career that's, that matters a lot to me. And that's why I really enjoy it. That's really good. And then um, final question, I just got to ask, how is your work-life balance? So it's been, it's been pretty tough lately just because getting a master's in working full-time is, um, <laughs> it's a lot. i um, not going to sugarcoat it. It's a lot of work. I, I, I work around eight to nine hours uh, uh, through work a day and then uh, maybe another two to three um, with school every day. Um, but I've, I've been trying to work on getting better at like scheduling. I, in college, I was very kind of go with the flow and I would kind of just do things whenever, but, um, doing, doing this now doesn't really, doesn't really cut it. So, uh, I've been getting a lot better with scheduling. I've noticed that it actually helps, like helps me, uh, kind of schedule time for like thing, other, other things other, that aren't school work too. Um, so like I, I can schedule time for like, I don't know when I want to uh, like go work out or when I want to like go hang out with some friends and stuff. I can kind of like make sure I have time allotted for it versus uh, just kind of like, yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it, 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 it's tough. It, you, you just gotta learn how to manage your time well. Um, but in the end, I think it, 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 it's, it's worth it. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's really great. I thank you so much for all of your really great and comprehensive answers. I'm sure the students that were able to join us here today really appreciated what you were able to share with us here today. And personally, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm sure that the students will be able to do this later will also be able to greatly benefit from what you were able to share with us here today. So I thank you so much for that.